Taiwan is extending its conscription period. We talked to former Admiral Li Ximing to understand why. And then we share a former soldier's perspective on all the changes. This is Taiwan Insider. Welcome to the show. President Tsai Ing-wen announced in late December that Taiwan would be extending its mandatory military service from four months to one year, starting in 2024. The move signals Taiwan is getting more serious about its national security. But questions remain about if the extension is enough to secure the country. So I spoke to retired Admiral Li Ximing on what he thinks about the extension plan and what else Taiwan can do to improve its self-defense. And mandatory military service and the new training regimen conscripts will undergo signal about Taiwan's current national security situation. But I think the extension of the uh, conscription is a correct direction. You know, the current four months conscription is too short to establish required fighting capabilities for those conscripts. That means that the all leaders and the defense authority has already thought about the uh, serious threats from uh, China. Uh, by doing the uh, this kind of extension, it can demonstrate the uh, willingness to defend itself for the uh, for the for the Taiwan. You know. So we can say that the main reason for the increase in the conscription period is to improve Taiwan's defense preparedness. But many, including yourself, have expressed doubts that Taiwan's military has the capacity to train these new increases in recruits or to train them according to their new regimen, including how to use advanced weaponry like drones and javelin missiles. What could the military do to relieve these training bottlenecks? Yes, the, I believe the uh, for this kind of the reform for extension of conscription, the uh, military will have a very serious challenge because the, now the military is lacking of training field, facilities, manpowers, and advanced the small arms like drums, the stingers, and the javelin missiles. You know, you, when you suddenly you get a lot of the, uh, the people, conscripts, get into the military, then you need the more cadre to, 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 to lead them, to train them. But now, the, uh, under the condition of lacking the um, field facility and the main power, you know, uh, I believe the, um, that is the big challenge for military. Uh, but I, I also believe they are, they are trying to work it out. I hope that they can do it well in the next few, few, few years. You've previously said that Taiwan needs to change its military strategy to accommodate any increase in its fighting force. Has the government or military authorities released any plans relating to this? I sense that the government as a military authority is uh, moving towards to the asymmetry by experiencing the buying more survivable precision and these are small arms. However, I have not seen it's released any plans to change the strategies. Perhaps we can observe the nation, national defense reports, which should be released by the end of this year. I always emphasize that you just cannot just buy some uh, asymmetrical uh, weapon system. That you means you already established the uh, asymmetrical warfare capabilities. If you don't have the asymmetrical strategy, considering the uh, very imbalanced the, uh, defense resource and the uh, military capabilities, I urge that the all defense authorities should conduct kind of a strategic paradigm shift. So I believe if the, um, the defense authority uh, wants to their job to well. They should study with the strategy and operational plan and the, uh, the training plan. So we'll make those uh, large number of conscripts the, uh, will have uh, the uh, better fighting skill. 
Last year, you published a book on the overall defense concept, which is an asymmetric warfare strategy that you originally developed. Taiwanese authorities were set to adopt the strategy into military planning, but those efforts have stalled. Why do you believe Taiwan should adopt an asymmetric warfare strategy, and why have authorities been hesitant to adopt it? And does the new conscription plan include anything about it? Yeah, I think you know. The Taiwan's defense is facing the、uh, several、uh, challenges. The、uh, first is the、uh, we have this kind of gray zones, the、uh, invasion every days, and we will probably have a stress of the full scale invasion in the next few years. The people say they starting from the twenty twenty seven, and、uh, we have a very serious disparity of the、uh, defense resource across states. And、uh, we don't have too much ties, and especially、uh, we have a difference the、um, ideology. Even we have a serious national identity. This all give the trouble to our our our, our problem. Especially if we insist on the the、uh, that kind of uh, conventional uh, defense plan still. We will finally fail because there's an imbalance the defense resource and the military capability. That's the reason why I want to promote the asymmetrical warfare capability. For the past seven decades, military military has been using the conventional warfare capability to defend the country, and the senior leaderships have been trained by conventional training methods. So it is not easy to change the mindset, you know. Also, the、um, in the other aspect, that government and the civilians have no clear understanding about the asymmetrical warfare and、uh, its beauty to deter and、uh, defend the country under the disparity of defense resources across the streets.、Uh, fortunately,、uh, we heard about the President Tsai.、Uh, Announced that the,、uh, we will emphasize the asymmetrical capability、uh, at the double ten of last year, and the general director of national security、uh, council, uh, the、uh, the Mr. Gu,、uh, when he answered with the answer with the media inquired that the, he answered with the Taiwan should establish this kind of、um, mobile distributed. The, Precision, lethal, the、uh, small weapon system, instead of the、uh, the big conventional、uh, platform. I can sense that the、uh, the government and the military military are changing, but in my view, that's not enough. We are in urgent, so we 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 have to speed up our progress. Another question is about morale. Morale is a problem in Taiwan's military. For example, I've actually personally heard from various men who have served that when their commanders ask their squad if they would be willing to fight if Taiwan was invaded, most refuse to say that they would. What could Taiwan do to improve morale, especially now that you're going to have so many new recruits coming in? Well, I I have never heard about this kind of a story. <laughs> However. If it is the case in the military,、uh, we need to stress on the patriotic education. You know, we should make the soldier know why we fight and who、uh, we fight for. And another way to improve morale in the military is to establish the sense of honor. Being a military person and the honor could only be acquired from strict training. You know. You just cannot do your job well, and you just cannot devote yourself to defend your country if you don't have the、uh, sense of honor as a military man. So when we have a lot of number of conscripts get into、uh, military, if we don't give them a very strict training, and they will not establish the.、Uh, Kind of sense of honor. Without honor, you will not have the、uh, the morale to defend yourself. What about nationalism? Do you think engendering more national identity in Taiwanese people will make them more willing to serve? Well, national identity is the 
it's a serious thing, but I don't think the uh, there is a, any uh, effective way we that we can solve this kind of a problem because we get the consensus is very important. But it doesn't mean that we have no hope under the uh, this kind of a division, you know. If the, we can uh, demonstrate our determination, our willingness to defend ourselves, even as all of our, our, our people in Taiwan, we can still demonstrate those kind of determination and resilience to, to China so uh, to deter them from taking any uh, invasion. You can see my interview with Admiral Li on our social media. And there's a clear reason why Taiwan needs to stay prepared. China has been staging large-scale military exercises around Taiwan for many months now. While most people in Taiwan are gearing up for the Lunar New Year, its military has a different kind of preparation. Taiwan's military is staging additional drills ahead of the Lunar New Year. The drills are taking place at a new Air Force base in Xinzhou. These drills are meant to assure Taiwan's public of the country's ability to respond to the increasing number of Chinese military exercises. The Air Force is focusing their efforts on Mirage 2000 fighter jet sorties and simulating intercepting enemy planes. Mirage 2000 jets are costly to operate, but the Air Force says they are indispensable assets protecting the Taiwan Strait. An Air Force lieutenant colonel says Taiwan's military units are always on standby and ready to respond to any contingency. Another pilot says the Mirage 2000 demonstrated superior combat abilities in a simulation against F-16 fighter jets. Though the new year is a time for reunion and relaxation for most, the military has their priorities focused on defending the country. Welcome back. So today we're speaking about military conscription and actually our very own Brendan <laughs> recently completed his military service. Yes, what I was did. it like? Yeah, so I completed my military service last year in June. So I did the four months uh, conscription and I have to say like it was an experience for sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot to unpack there. And also with the recent news about military conscription extension, mm -hmm. I have a lot of thoughts. Okay. Um, but I'll tell you about kind of the overall experience that I had first. So four months, they broke it down as your first month, you do your training. So this is your basic training. And at the end, you have an assessment. So they mm -hmm. either pass you or they fail you. But then you then do a lottery to do um, to figure out where you go next for right. your, the remaining three months. And then you also have a specialty. So I ended up in um, Yang Mei, which is in Taoyuan. Mm -hmm. And then I got the machine gun special really? specialty. So I actually have something I want to show you. Okay. So this Whoa. may look like a flimsy paper, but it's actually um, a target paper that I used uh, during my um, target practice for the machine gun. Nice. So, yeah. It's Is this little... good or bad? <laughs> you mean? Like, did you do well or did, did you do, do poorly? You know what? They ended up giving us just a lot of bullets. So I just, <laughs> I just went ham, I think. Okay. But I've never shot a gun before. And I think um, this was definitely something you don't experience on a daily basis. Right. And I think Obviously. besides just kind of having um, experiences with, I guess, guns. I think what was more significant was like getting to meet other young Taiwanese men and hear what right. they thought about being in the army, doing their service, and also kind of what they thought about Taiwan as a whole. And what did they think, for example? Like, Yeah, so I think my experience was especially interesting because I think around the third day of my military service, we didn't have our phones, we didn't have any way of knowing news. Uh, like what was happening around the world. Mm. But on the third day, that's when Russia invaded Ukraine. Wow. And so um, our, I distinctly remember our captain just saying to us, there, he was like, do you know what happened today? And then we were like, no, we don't. <laughs> and then he goes, Russia invaded Ukraine. And then wow. I think we were all very surprised and shocked. Really? And he said to us later, he was like, well, you know, the possibility of China invading Taiwan, you never know now what that may look like. Right. And so he then asked us, um, like, who would go to the battlefield if today China invaded Taiwan? Just like, like that. And, right. you know, nobody raised their hand. Or 
Actually, I would say mm. not a lot of people raise their hand. That's so interesting because, you know, yeah. at the end of my interview with Admiral Lee, mm -hmm. I told him about stories like this because your story is not the first one I've actually heard of yeah. people being asked, like, who is ready right now to defend Taiwan with their own life mm -hmm. and people not raising their hands. Um, I don't want to say that means that Taiwanese people aren't patriotic, right. but it just means that there is a morale problem. Yeah, I think, well, I can really only speak from my own experiences, but um, I also think it's very interesting because this conversation has been going on for so long. In a way, maybe we didn't, maybe there wasn't a sense of imminent threat. Mm, and I feel like, right. you know, if I, I know that a lot of people compare like Taiwanese young men to like other soldiers around the world. But I think when the time, like if there ever were a situation where we did have to go to war, I feel like that would be, that may look differently. Things would change. Yeah. People, like when it becomes real in that moment, things would change. Feelings would change for yeah. sure. And I think what was also interesting was that I think nowadays people look at four months conscription people as like oh they're so lazy or they're yeah. like um they're so weak or they're incapable. just sweeping they're yeah. just stamping paperwork but yeah. i have to say like from what i've observed taiwanese men are very diligent they mm. like are they do what they're told and they always try to do like they always try to do their best right as like trivial as the tasks task may seem right i think that's what i've observed so far so they're also trying to change it I, it seems like from the new conscription plan which mm -hmm. actually includes other measures as well that they're trying to get people doing more just like weapons training yeah and you i know. think that would be great i think a lot of people f well from the, the conversations that i had some people felt like it was not the best use of time that mm -hmm. there is like uh, improper time management sure. in terms of what you could do. And so I think this extension to one year, I think um, like the time itself is not going to be a solution in my opinion. Mm. I think it's actually revisiting kind of your curriculum and how you are training soldiers, how you are building morale. That will be the key in reshaping Taiwan's military from my own experiences. Not so much like um, an extension to one year will magically make people feel more I don't know, uh, have more pride in being in the Taiwan army. It's more so that like the actual um, curriculum and like the rigidity and the strictness and, and like the, the seriousness and the, the seriousness. seriousness that people take. Right. Yeah. So I do resonate with what Admiral Lee said about um, kind of you need to have you need to set the tone mm. and you need to have like a more strict and more serious outlook on Taiwanese military. And that will trickle down maybe to affect other young Taiwanese men and how they view uh, how they view the military. Right. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for that insight. <laughs> um, so that's about all we have time for today from Taiwan Insider. I'm Edmar Waxman. And I'm Brendan Wong. You can catch us on social media like Facebook or Twitter. And subscribe to our YouTube page. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.